Phillip O'Brien Jr., safety and cornerback. So you say starting your ninth grade, every year somebody's gotten killed. One of your friends got killed. Who one of the best wide receivers you ever went up against in practice? Go deep. I say all oh, loud. I know what time it is. He one hand him in the end zone. They say once you get into Alabama, you gotta pick a side. Either Auburn or Alabama, you can't get out of that port. Uh, I'm gonna just start it off from 2020. Uh, Bryce Gowdy. Uh, you know you had Terrence. Uh huh. How did Terrence get killed? Oh man, he was actually at his granddad's funeral. And like, um, this is the day I was at Auburn. And we get a phone call. Coach was like, Terrence got shot, Terrence got shot. And like, an hour later, it was like, oh, he didn't make it. So I guess his his family was, you know, having problems with some, some other side of his family. Yeah. And somebody ended up, somebody ended up shooting. And I guess, I guess he was just in the way. He was in the way and he right. just, uh, he played seven on seven with y'all? Nah, he just played taco. He played taco? Yeah, he just played taco football though. Okay. So so Bryce. Tell me tell me a little bit about Bryce. Oh yeah, he's a great dude. Bro. Yeah? Bryce, everybody loves Bryce. Everybody loves Bryce. Uh-huh. Come in to practice, start stresses off. He gonna work you someday. You know He's the leader? Yes, sir, most definitely. He's the leader? Positive yes, sir. Committed to Georgia Tech, right? Georgia Tech, yes sir. And you um you played the last football game with him, right? Yes, sir. How did that impact you? It hurt me in a way. I could never, like, just looking at him, you could never tell nothing like that. No? Yeah, it's just, everybody loved Bryce Goddard. Everybody. When you see death happen around you, how do you how do you see that? Do you see it like, uh, is it normal, abnormal, death in life? How, how do you feel about it? You know, you got to take it like you got to live another day, but it hurt. There's no hurt. There's no hurt for a little minute, but, uh -huh. you know, stuff in the future, you just, now you just, okay, I'm gonna do it for him. I'm gonna make it, cause I know if he was here, he would do it for me too. So you, so you say, starting in ninth grade, you had friends, you got some friends that went to jail? Uh, not, not, not too many. I had one of my close brothers, but it was, I wanna say like eighth grade, seventh grade. Eighth grade, seventh grade, they went, sure. they went to jail for a long time? A long time, yes sir. How long? They got like a life sentence right now. You understand? Do you, do you understand why some of the kids take those routes? Or why you understand why, right? Yes, sir. Explain it. Explain it, cause cause there's people that's watching this that don't understand. It. They don't understand why would you be out there having to rob a store? Why would you have to sell drugs? Explain it in your own words. Everybody live a different life. You know I mean? Like some stuff might not be for that person. Somebody might not want to. Go to the NFL like you want to go to the NFL. Some people don't want to come to practice and work hard as you work hard. It's just some people you can't change. It's just you can you can you can always tell a person do this and that, do this and that, but you can't make them do it. Right. You can't make them do it. So I just feel like they take a different route because you know that's all that's all they probably know. Right. Growing up around you know killing, stealing, yeah, that's all they know. But you can change for the better, but that's that's up to them. Tell me, tell me something good about Coach Glenn. Oh, Coach Glenn. Yeah. <laughs> Just know you gotta get ready to work with you, Coach Glenn. He gonna work, he gonna work you. He gonna, I swear, Coach Glenn gonna kill you, but it's all love at the end of the day. Uh -huh. But you gotta understand, he do a lot for us, so he just asks you to go out there and work hard, give you all. You can't do that. Right. Who one of the best wide receivers you ever went up against in practice? Best? Uh, yeah. All of them. Like, I just, all of them. Dejan Medugo, Xavier Restrepo, uh -huh. Bryce Gowdy, Aiden Hennigan, and even some receivers you don't know, like Jamario Medugo, like, like Hansy Colas, like, boys work. Talk about Restrepo. You went up against Restrepo for a whole what? Two years or one year? One year. I went yeah one year. One year. Give me talk about Restrepo. What what what's good about Restrepo? Oh, routes most definitely. And the difference between him and a lot of receivers, he know how to play like football. He know how to get open. So he he gonna work you. He gonna block you. But like okay, for instance, you playing off. He might give you. He might add a little bit more to his route to throw you off just so he can get over, or if it's man, you know, he gonna keep running his route throughout the ball, and then the quarterback throw the ball right on him, and he gonna make a play in the air. Right. And it just, you just can't underestimate him, though. Like, uh -huh. because of his size, he, he's, he's definitely real hard. He's real hard. Do you, you expect him to have uh, success season. at University of Miami? Yes, sir. Yeah? yeah? Most definitely. You believe in him? Yes, sir. He played quarterback for y'all a couple times last year, Oh, uh, yeah, he came, <laughs> yeah, I guess, uh, St. John, St. John, yeah, yeah, he scored a couple. He's an athlete. Uh -huh. And he played defense for us, too. He caught a couple of interceptions, too. He's an athlete. At, at Cardinal Gibbons, you had to go against um, 
What's his name? Kid is committed to um, Clemson. Um, oh yeah, Trash Stilato. Stilato. T- uh, tell me about Stilato. What's good about Stilato? Ah, that's my brother. Like every day in practice, we go at it. Like we just fight, we fight uh-huh. every day. But one thing good about him too is he he's actually fast too. He's a real fast kid and he got ball skills and routes. So it's like uh huh. He like he's a he's a real good receiver. I love I love him. Yes. When I was there, he bench pressed three hundred and twenty five pounds. Is he? Does that strength show on the football field? Like you ever tried to put your hands on him and couldn't get your hands on him? Oh, uh, it's it's been a couple of times he he used to try to like block me out to the play, but I ain't never really seen him like. You, just, you never really felt that. Nah, right? I ain't never really felt it. You didn't know he was that strong. Nah, I know he's strong, bro. You can tell. <laughs> you look at him, tell he's strong. It works, bro. Work hard. Be great, bro. I keep working hard, bro. Better than here in the morning. Better than here in the morning, bro. Eight o'clock, be up, right? Tell me about your love for football. Like what? When did you realize that you had a love for football? Uh, just coming out of Lily, just first time touching the ball, knowing I was a skilled player, that really let me know I can be successful in football. Yeah. What game was that? Uh, I was Cooper City Cowboys in scrimmage, first scrimmage. Uh, I caught three interceptions, and I scored five times at running back. Mm-hmm. So tell me a little bit about the people like who've been like a real support and a motivation. Um, just been very like sincere with helping you to get to where you are today. Uh, I, I want to thank my granddad, granddad, definitely my grandmother. And you know, it's it's some supporters that came and I definitely wanna thank my auntie Zephyr Coma too. She she she's a bit she played a big role in supporting me too. And and you know, I wanna thank my little brothers, especially my family, my other families, and it's just wanna thank everybody. Yeah. Um how does it feel? How does this moment like, you know, feel to you? I know you spoke earlier, you said like you're ready you're happy to go to college, like you're excited about it. Tell me like, you know, what's this process been like for you? Uh it's it's been a bumpy process, but it's it also been great. So now I know that I'm committed and I don't have no worries right now. I'm worried about school, getting throughout the year and working hard. So therefore when I get to college, I can be prepared to play. So I say it's, it's been great. It's been great for me. Life's been going great for me. What was the deciding factor in you picking this school? Because I know you were speaking to other schools, but what about it that made Auburn the final decision for you? It's just Auburn is for me, like the work schedules, how close the, you know, the dorms are from the football stadium. Uh, the workout sessions and you know just coaches trusting the coaches and applying to what they're telling me and you know going on on the field and making it happen and I get that mm-hmm. it's like when you wake up in the morning knowing you got to grind like I got to get up in the morning I got to go work out it's not like I'm just at home playing a game all day and, and and football just it really keep me focused too it keep me focused because I think about it as if what if I'm not playing football what, what else I'll be doing out here so football is a big key to success for me and it's a big tool when did your love, I guess, would you say that your love with football began? My love with football, when I, when I first ran the ball. So I want to say, like, seventh grade. Seventh grade, when I first actually played a skill position. And I knew I was an athlete after that. What happened? Uh, you know, I scored the first touchdown. It was like, we was playing Cooper City Cowboys. That's when I played for the Sunrise Gators, playing Cooper City Cowboys. I think I caught, like, three interceptions, and I scored, like, five rushing touchdowns in the scrimmage. Like, my first time playing running back. And that was it for you. That was it for me right there. That 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 right there let me know football. I can I can play football. I can. This is a successful sport for me. I can do this. Yeah. Who do you look up to? Right now, I look up to uh, Patrick Peterson most definitely. Why? Two reasons. He from he from my city, and I just like his game of football. And he's a lock lock man up. So he gonna get in front of you, lock you up all game. How would you describe your style? How would I describe my style? Big, lengthy, can run. I can move my hips and I got b- good ball skills like Patrick Peterson. And, and like, he, he consecutive, like he can keep going, lock you up all game. So I feel like I can do that. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Like for people who like who don't know, um, like your story, you know, like family life, you know, where you come from, where you grew up. Just tell me a little bit about yourself. Growing up in Pompano Beach, Florida, it's, it's kind of it's kind of a great thing. But then again, it's, it's like, ah, because you know, you're going to always have haters. You're going to always have naysayers and people always saying different stuff about you but as long as you as long as you go on a hundred you ain't worrying about what nobody else saying you're good growing up i'm from pompano beach as well i grew up around here as well um mm-hmm. and i was telling him about i feel like a trader being here because i went to <laughs> <laughs> same thing like my granddad feeling with just a little kid you know you run around like the normal kids and stuff i don't see he's always bigger than the next kid but he, he never knew what he what he really was worth and stuff so i always trained him Tried to but he never knew what he was doing with like feet work, everything. He never understood. 
until he, he, uh, he always played on the line at first. His first year he played on the line, um, on left tackle. So he just enjoyed playing football because that was his first time like, playing football. Then well, as he got older, like 10, 11 years, he started getting into himself. And then he learned he could run the ball. It was over. <laughs> it was all in. He, he, he kept telling me what Tony Doyle said. <laughs> What what was that transition like? Like what 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 happened after you say it was all over? Then what happened? Yeah, he was excited. To, 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 every day when he'd wake me up, Dad, let's go to football practice. Let's go train. Yes, he, he was that kid. Always let's go train early. I never got to wake he wake me up. So I, 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 when he started doing that, I knew he really wanted to play football. Then. Yeah. What did what what did the family do in terms of like the support and what you guys had to do for him? Because I know a lot of times. To raise a kid like that, you know, it needs a lot of support, it needs a lot of dedication, a lot of practices, a lot of commitments. You know, what was that like for you as a family to say, okay, we're going to stand behind him? For we, when we, as for me, I got two brothers, younger brother, NFL, Zach Crocker, Henry Crocker, my younger brother. I'm the oldest, and I always played football. I was, I put it in college first. I was a all American, number one player in Florida, running right track, thirty points in basketball, everything. So me and a kid named Rob Baker. So my younger brother always wanted to be. Like me too, like play, play football right right behind me. So it, they, their name was Zach Clark Henry Clark, went to Florida State, both of them. Went to NFL, Zach played 18 years for the Oakland Raiders. Henry played 12, 10 years for um, Atlanta Falcons, Minnesota Vikings. So he really was already like in the football family. You know, so so we, we came from there. We came from a hood that was drug confessed. Um, no, he caught you over, he caught, caught his home. It was nothing but drugs out there. We was we had no money, we was poor, everything. But sacrifice my mom had one mom, you feel me? One mom sacrificed two jobs, so it was like sacrifice. So for us to just give back, say, man, listen, man, you don't know what how hard it is, but how easy you really got it because we really ain't had that when we was young. So what we didn't have, that's what we try to give him. That's when we was when we were young, we had nothing. We was young. Anything else you want to say about him? He ain't ugly. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, just tell us about like just life here, uh, just growing up here. Because uh, I know football here? is a big part of this community. Like That's football, right. homecoming, like this is That's this right. is what we live, breathe, and do all the time. You know, so just tell me about what the community did in terms of like fostering that love for football for you. Oh man, like for instance, like when Beaver Beach High School played uh, Blanche Ely. Ooh, like it's, it's sold out instantly. It's, it's a McDougal Bowl. Everybody want to see it. It might not be a, a you know a close game, but it's a big rivalry game because it's it's basically like two hoods going against each other, and that's and that's that's very hectic. It's very hectic. Yeah. All right, going into your last year, uh, what are you looking forward to? Going into my last year, I'm looking oh, forward I, to. Yeah. Uh, I just I really like this year. I have like less classes because I'm graduating early in January, so. I have less classes, so looking forward to I just want to you know, stay on a good note, finish off smooth. And I, I, I want to double my stats last year for this year. So I want to have, I, I want to try to make all state this year. I want to make all state and and just, and, and definitely win state because last year we fell short last year. And this year I definitely want to win state title. You're graduating early? Yes, ma'am. How, how come? Uh, because, you know, once, I, you know, you take summer school every year. Every year I've been here, I took summer school. Okay. And that's give me more credits and credits each year, so that way I can graduate like January, January. Was and there I'll a be, reason you wanted to do that? Yes, ma'am. So I can learn the playbook early and just you know get on campus and be familiar with stuff. And yeah. just so by the time you know all the, all the other recruits come, I'm already used to it. So it's be, it's basically like I'm sort of kind of like a veteran, but I'm not because I've been there longer than them. All right. How many how many how many colleges you went to go see? How many actually visits you went to the college? Uh, I want to say at least at least like. Nine or ten of them. You've been on like nine or ten campuses? Yes. Sir. What's some of the names? University of Georgia, Clemson, Auburn, Florida State, Miami. Uh, how come you didn't stay here? Like, how come you go to Miami? Nah, Miami. Like, I, I, I love Miami, but my uncle's going to Florida State. I'm, I'm a huge uh, Florida State fan. That's my dream school. But, like I said, you got to do stuff that's best for you. You got to go where fits you. So, I just felt. And Alabama's not that too far. So, my family want to come up there, come, come see me. That's, that's right there. That ain't too far, right there. And uh, I've been to, oh, University of Florida too. I, I like the University of Florida. Oh. I like the University of Florida. And I've been to like FAU, and I, like tournaments and stuff like that. I heard when you flying into Alabama, they say once you get into Alabama, you gotta pick a side. 
you to Auburn, Alabama. You can't get out of the airport. Uh, yeah, is, 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 is that true? Did they tell you the same thing when you went there or what? Uh, I, I didn't actually hear that, but yeah. it's like when you go into like the CVS's, the corner stores, they all have a side of Auburn and they have a side of Alabama. Now, so that was kind of weird, but. So me, I went to the cashier. I was like, so so what fan are you? Alabama or Auburn fan? And she just told me like she, she was confused. Like she she couldn't pick a side.